Hey there friends, so we just had another epic lunar eclipse event recently and I shot a lot of really cool time-lapse content that I had people asking how I made. And so in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly how I edited these animated time slice videos in After Effects. Man, these lunar eclipse events are just one of my favorite things to shoot. They're so fascinating. In fact, four years ago in January of 2018, we had another blood moon that I shot pretty extensively and made some of my favorite images from. And one of these actually ended up being one of the more successful pieces throughout my career. I already made an entire video explaining that story and how I made that image in Photoshop. So go check it out after this one. But in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to bring it into After Effects and make an animated time slice video. So here we go. So I shot a sequence of raw photos. I edited them in Lightroom. I used LR time-lapse to ramp and de-flicker the time-lapse. Those are all important parts of the process that I'm not going to get into in this video. So subscribe to see me explain that in future videos. Okay, so I'm in After Effects. We're gonna start a brand new project. Double click our project window to import our first file. I'm gonna navigate to where my files are. But in my case, I'm actually gonna import a photo sequence that will be treated as if it's a single video clip. So when you open the folder, you wanna make sure you're looking at the files in order that they were shot. So I'm gonna right click, sort by name. That will put them in chronological order, assuming that they're named sequentially. Click on the very first file, make sure that create composition and importer JPEG sequence are checked and open. So this is a 8K timeline at 30 frames per second. Now you might think that we should work on a smaller document size, but hold up because we'll get there. We're gonna shrink this down to fit on social media standard sizes eventually, but that's one of the last steps in the process. For me, it's very important to start at the full resolution that you have available to you because nowadays we have so many different places this video might end up. I might want it at a 16 by nine 4K and then I might wanna flip it vertically for an Instagram reel at a nine by 16. You always wanna do the majority of your edits with the largest composition possible. And then at the end of the process, you can crop it down to different sizes. This clip is almost 45 seconds long. I'm actually gonna shrink that down and make it a little faster. So right click, time, enable time remapping. Now all you have to do to speed it up is grab that last keyframe and drag it towards the beginning. Now basically that second keyframe represents the end of that video clip. In my case, I think I'm gonna go about 10 seconds. So we're gonna highlight those keyframes on time remapping and go up to this icon for the graph editor. So we can see currently that this speed ramp is linear. What we wanna do is ramp it so that it's a little bit smoother. Click on the first keyframe and then press this little icon for easy ease out. Click the second keyframe, click easy ease in. You can also right click keyframe assistant and choose it here. What's important to understand is the steeper that this line is, the faster your clip is gonna move. So this is basically like a visual representation of acceleration and deceleration so I can get the effect that I want. I'm gonna click the graph editor button again to get back to my timeline. Okay, so this is a good point to explain that in most of my creative process, I don't know exactly what the final result is going to be while I'm working on it. I have a general idea of what I'm going for and what is possible, but in reality, what people don't see is that it takes a lot of experimentation. So that final video that you saw was actually a result of me just kind of playing around with different ideas in After Effects. And I think that's when some of the most interesting results occur. So I'm gonna walk you through my original thought process and how I ended up getting to the result that you saw. So the first thing I wanted to do was play with blending modes. So I duplicated this first layer and set the top one to lighten. We actually wanna shift our top clip over. We now have two moons all of a sudden. And that's because this top layer is using a lightened blend mode to show through pixels that are brighter than whatever's below it. Keep in mind that every scenario is different. If it wasn't nighttime, this might not work the same, but in this case, it worked well. So we can already see that there's some interesting potential here, but what I did initially, just out of curiosity, is I kept duplicating the layer with Command D and shifting it just a little bit forward, just to kind of see what would happen. So as simple and easy as that, we already have a really interesting result. I wanted to take it a few steps further, so I'm actually gonna delete all these layers. I started experimenting with the slices. I started with my top layer. If you click the rectangle tool or Q on the keyboard, and then you just drag that anywhere you want in the frame. What that does is it creates a mask on that layer. It is only showing that layer where you drew that rectangle. 
And if we hide the eyeball of the lower layer, you can see and understand what's happening. That's great, but the moon actually passes through that mask. We want to track the moon with that mask. You drop down your mask options. On the mask path, you click this little stopwatch. What the stopwatch does is initiate keyframing. I want to change this value over time. Now what I'll do is drag all the way to the beginning of the video and make sure you're on your, your selection tool, which is V. Simple as this, just drag your mask to match up with the moon. And now you'll see going from keyframe one to keyframe two, it's actually animating. Now it almost tracks the moon, but it's not quite perfect. So what you do now is you start to split the difference. So I'll go somewhere in the middle of those two keyframes, move the mask, and you can see it adds a new keyframe automatically and adjust it until your moon is properly tracked with that mask. I will also do it on the back end. It shouldn't take long, but once you add a few keyframes, your moon should be perfectly tracked with that mask. Then you have a clip that you can drag around. Duplicate, drag, duplicate. Now we can see some interesting things happening. As we shift these clips around, their timing is a little bit different, which causes this really cool kind of rainbow effect. Now, the other thing we notice here is the layers on top are actually covering the moon below it. What we do to combat that is we highlight all of our layers at the same time and press blending mode, lighten. And just like that, those moons are able to show through while also showing those time slices that we created. So this was my workflow as I was experimenting. And as you can see, this is already a pretty cool result. However, there's a few things I think we can do. So first of all, I don't like that this left side has a slice of nighttime. Once again, we're gonna back up to the beginning. I'm gonna delete all those, duplicate the background layer. Now we're gonna add a mask again, but this time I'm gonna drag from the outside of the frame. And just like before, we wanna animate that mask so that it follows along at the same pace as the moon. Mask path, click the stopwatch. I'll go to the very end this time. Now you wanna be careful not to drag the box beyond the edge. I'm gonna click just these right points and drag those out to the edge. Now, another thing to note is that you can change a few parameters of your mask for different creative results. You might wanna add a little bit of feathering so that it kind of fades from one layer to the next. And here's what that would look like. Now, obviously you'd wanna be careful that you're not feathering so far where it starts to impact the moon. In my case, I'm actually gonna keep it at zero because I kind of like the effect of having those nice hard definitive slices. Now, same as before, we have to go through and add a few keyframes so that it accurately tracks along with the moon. Once again, I'm gonna set this to lighten blending mode and then start to shift it around. Do that a few times. At this point, you can decide how many moons you want, continue duplicating these layers, you can duplicate all of them at once. Infinite moon glitch. <laughs> so really the creative possibilities are endless here. And this is where you can add your own personal taste and style and really get carried away and experiment. The other thing is you can decide how far spaced apart you want the moons to be. In my case, I think I had like eight or nine moons. So right off the bat, there's one thing I know I wanna fix. On the left side, you can see a flicker happening because every time a new layer appears, we're jumping back to the beginning of the clip where it's a little brighter the result of that is this flickering that happens on the left side. So there's a few ways to tackle that. It's fairly simple. I'm actually gonna just highlight all of my layers, drag the playhead to the beginning of the timeline and press option left bracket. So if we select a clip and press the U key, we can see our keyframes that were added to that clip. That's an important shortcut to know. What's happening is each clip doesn't really start until that keyframe in time remapping. Everything before that is just going to be the very first frame of the clip, just frozen. And so you can see the difference here where the moons are actually spawning from the one existing moon, the starting point. Unlike before we made that change, the moon just abruptly appears on the horizon there. We're actually facing a similar issue at the end of the video. I'll go to the very end of the final clip. I wanna highlight every single one, and then I press option right bracket. Instead of those moons disappearing once they get to their final position, they will freeze at the end. Okay, so we have our effect, but now I wanna be able to manipulate that clip. I'm gonna highlight everything. Right click and pre-compose. I'll usually check the bottom option here. Now that just makes it a little bit easier to work with that clip. What I wanna do is add another time remapping to speed it up and play around with some more combinations. It's a good time to create a new composition for use on social media. Let's do an Instagram reel. 
So width is gonna be 1080 and height gonna be 1920. Always make sure that your frame rate matches your source file. We can go back to our original and I'm actually going to duplicate these files and put them right in here. So when you first drop it in, that clip is gonna be way too large for your composition. I would press S for scale and then shift P for position. So now you have these two attributes pulled up. We can start to downscale it, drag it into place, frame it in a way that we like. In my case, I always like to add a little more motion. I tend to find that makes things a little more dynamic. So what I'm actually gonna do is animate the scale and position of this clip. I'll typically easy ease both the beginning and the end keyframes. Okay, so final step is totally not necessary, but it's a personal preference of mine. I like to have all my videos infinitely loop, if possible. I'm gonna so trim this clip, I'm gonna duplicate it, right click, time reverse layer. Now drag that so that the ends match up. Zoom in here to see a little better. Now since this new clip is reversed, it should start at the same place that the previous clip ends. So basically we've got this little ping pong effect. Don't forget about audio, now's your chance to add some cool music or sound effects. So here's what the final version looked like on my timeline. And at the very end, it will match the very beginning. Okay, I think that's it. It wasn't so bad, right? It's funny, I honestly remember this being a lot harder. And the reason for that is because I did a lot of exploration to get to that result. It took a lot of trial and error. And it seems funny now recreating it. I'm like, why was that so hard? It felt a lot simpler this time. Now that I've made it for the tutorial, hopefully I've made it a lot easier for you guys as well. But I still want you to play around, experiment, make this your own, do some crazy things, take this another few steps further. I wanna see how much further you can take this effect uh, to make it really interesting. If you do put this to use, tag me in your post. I'd love to see what you create. Thanks again for watching. And you guys are gonna wanna subscribe because I've got another badass After Effects tutorial breaking down exactly how I made this video. That's it for now. Love you guys. Thanks friends. We'll talk soon.